Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the annual meeting of the Binghamton Local Development Corporation. Our first order of business for the annual meeting is the presentation of the 2021-22 BLDC audit by Bonadio and Company. Jacob Skeeval, CPA, is here to present the audit. The floor is yours. Thank you. Welcome. Morning. Uh, it's Dr. <coughs> uh, Jacob Skeeval from Bonadio. Um, I'm the principal responsible for signing your audit. Um, I'll be presenting, this is for your August 31, 2022 year end. Starting with uh, the bound packet in front of you, uh, we'll turn over a couple pages to page one. This is the independent auditor's report. Uh, if you compare it to the prior year, you'll notice it's in a slightly different uh, format based on new auditing standards. But what they did, uh, something that's pretty helpful for us all, is now the opinion is right at the top of the report. Um, and you'll see in those first couple paragraphs um, that our opinion is that the financial statements presented are materially correct. So this is an unmodified opinion. It's the highest level of assurance that we can provide to you. And it's what you're hoping to see each year when you open this up. Moving down the auditor's report, we also just identify mm -hmm. the responsibilities of management versus us as your external auditors. Management is responsible for these financial statements, the presentation of them, and ensuring controls are in place to make sure information is uh, properly presented. Our responsibility as your auditor is on the next page and essentially that responsibility is to perform a risk assessment and audit procedures in order to support our audit opinion on the statements. Moving over to page seven in this document, uh, to the statements of net position, we'll just touch on a couple of financial highlights. Uh, so your statements of net position, essentially your balance sheet, You'll see on here, uh, total assets decreased about $300,000, primarily related to loans receivable and collections throughout the year. And there was a corresponding decrease in net position of essentially that cash was received from loan payments and subsequently spent out that we'll see on the next page. Um, and just pointing out here, uh, it is identified that the bulk of the cash assets and net position are restricted related to the loan programs. Over on the next page, this is essentially your P&L for the year. And the main thing to point out that uh, is different from the prior year is the line for the program income remitted to the city that relates to the $300,000 allocated back to the city related to CDBG. And that pretty directly is what's corresponding to the decrease in that position for the year. Any questions there before I go on? All right. Um, we'll skip towards the back of this, uh, just point out the footnotes and other schedule here to provide further detail on the loan receivable balances and the other balances in the footnote or in the face of the statements that you can review. But we'll look over on page 17. This is our auditor's report. Um, in accordance with government auditing standards, a report on the internal controls over financial reporting. Um, this is required under your yellow book audit to report on if there were any deficiencies that we identified in considering the internal controls for the audit. And for this year, there weren't any uh, deficiencies to note, um, nothing that we would categorize as a significant deficiency or material weakness. 
So again, that's the outcome that uh, is most desirable. Next, we'll go back to uh, the next uh, stapled copy we have for you. Um, it's the one after the first paragraph, you see significant audit findings in bold. This is our required communications letter. Um, it contains information we're required to present to you as governments as a uh, part of the audit. And essentially some refer to it as the audit report card because it's where we would identify if we did have any issues dealing with management, any proposed audit adjustments, or any difficulties performing the audit, of which um, nothing to report here. So again, that's good news and what you're looking to see. And then lastly, just to touch on the third document you have um, related to public authorities law. This document <laughs> is just to acknowledge the requirements under public authorities law related to investments, but at this time there are no investments that would uh, require your compliance with uh, these regulations. So we just point that out to you that they're there, but not currently applicable, but as always, it's something that would be addressed if you were to enter any such investments. That's my short spiel. Is any uh, anything I can address for any of you? Do we have any questions? I'm sure you bill by the hour, so thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming down. Yeah. Um, Appreciate all your work and Rachel, thank you for all your work on this. It's and and Joel, it's 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 great. So appreciate it. So great. Okay, we'll move along. Thank well, you thank you. Much. Uh reach out if you ever need anything. Thank you. Thank you. Feel free to grab a snack on your way out. <laughs> thank you. So item number th number three is the completion of the um public authority accountability requirements. Uh, so every year we're required to, to do the following things. There's an annual review of the BLDC mission statement. Does, Brian, do you want to take over and do this? I see your name on there, so go ahead. I saw my name on there this morning too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I railroaded you as the you know chair of the governance committee. I can go over this if you want or you can. Oh. We just have you have here. Yes. Um, um, to acknowledge our fiduciary duties, we have obviously we have the mission statement that we're pretty used to look around the table. Not everybody, everybody knows what a fiduciary responsibility is. We have an obligation to make sure we're acting in the best interest of this body, not in the best of our own best interest. Uh, and that's pretty much the summary of what it is. We can't also, if there's any conflicts of interest, if there's any business interest, those have to be disclosed. Uh, and then there's a determination that needs to be made about whether they're disqualifying conflicts or whether they're simply something that has to be disclosed and moved forward. Because none of you are really new, I suspect that what that means is that all of your conflicts, to the extent there is a potential conflict, they're just that with the potential, they're not acting in conflict. However, if you were you or a family member were receiving direct remuneration or direct payments from someone via either employees or through businesses, that could be something that would create issues. The questions are in the packet. We've answered the packets and we'll deal with them as they, as they need to go. But I suspect that we've all been here long enough. That's not an issue. And that's pretty much a summer <laughs> in, a, you know, in a thumbnail of what the responsibilities are. Uh, no, just that if everyone could fill out those uh, disclosures and get them back to me um, either today or if you want to review them. Um, take a little while to review them. I will need them back probably before Thanksgiving um, because they have to go into Paris December 1st. So on the agenda, there's there's also the, the five performance measures which we won't read, but they're interesting to go through just for everyone's awareness. And we do need a motion to approve the performance measures for 2020. Oh, we do, okay. 
can I jump in real quick? Uh, at some point, HUD, um, HUD has been going through and um, being like, but um, at some point, and they say this with other programs, I have two, they are gonna probably at one, some, some point want an actual metric of a performance measure, as in number of businesses assisted, number of new jobs created through the, through the BLDC. It's not required now. It's not even really in the, the agreement yet, although the agreement doesn't indicate that a certain number of people in low income areas would be, but that's already dealt with, and that's always, that's the easy number to hit. So at some point in the future, possibly next year or in two years, the performance measure should should have an actual metric number in there at some point in regards to that. So just a heads up on that, something to be aware of in the future. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. So I think we'll um we have a motion for the um is it the whole thing or is it just the performance measures that we're approving? Um yeah, the only thing that we are approving is the performance measures. Motion. Thank you, Susan. Second. Thank you, Ryan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. <clears throat> okay, on to new business. Um, we have to annually approve the BLDC officers and committee membership. Does the slate need to be moved by someone, or is it, is it what it is? Um, so this is the proposed slate of uh, officers and committee members based on what they are now. Um, so if everyone is happy on their committees and in their officership and does not want to make any changes, we can approve this slate. Um, or if anyone would like to make any changes, you can do that at this meeting. You, have, you make changes at all throughout the year? I mean, especially to like the, the committees, I guess that would be. You can resign any committee at any time. And or you can good. join any committee at any time if you would like to. Yeah, I know, Frank, we had talked about we don't have you on a committee yeah, yet. So, I mean, for the time being, like, I, I'm happy to see where I would best okay. fit. Yeah. So, yeah. so you want to hold off? I'll hold you, off for the time. You can do it now if you'd like. No, no, I'm mean, <laughs> going to hold off for right now and then see where I, I may, uh, you know, what would be most applicable for me to, to get involved in. Okay. Okay. So can I have a motion for the slate and for the committees? Move, Ron, thank you. Second. Second. Thank you, Betsy. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Uh, congratulations, everyone. Oh, I mean, I guess that's what that was. That's I what guess. the first. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. okay. Can I move to adjourn? <laughs> well, no, that's that, right? that we'll... okay. no, we, we're gonna um no, hold it. I think we I think 2219 is yeah Patrick did just the, didn't read that we did at the beginning. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. um yeah. Yeah, so that's so all that yeah. Okay. Okay. As long as you're okay with that, Brian. I okay, good enough. So um do I have to do all in favor to end the meeting? Yeah, yeah. no, adjourn and then we'll okay. reopen. Meeting is adjourned. Um um, to adjourn, I think we have, yeah, um, okay. made a motion to adjourn. Um, okay. All right. So, moving right along, we'd like to call the meeting the uh, call the order of the um, November regular meeting of the uh, board of directors of the BLDC. Um, you have in front of you the minutes <laughs> from. The October 27th regular meeting. Ready, I'll take a motion. Everyone here, ready? Motion. Um, we have a second. Second. Thank you, Betsy. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you very much. Do you want to talk about the treasurer's report? Yes. So um, this is just the regular October treasurer's report. Um, and we will start on page four um, for the end of month balance in the restricted account. Uh, the end of month balance in the restricted account was one million thirty-two thousand five hundred fifty-nine and eighty-three cents. And there are no restricted account receivables. 
We'll skip over to page six for the UDAG account. The end of month balance in UDAG was $1,044,247.64. Um, I apologize, this didn't like really print in a way that is totally legible, but there are a number of checks. Um, yeah. We fronted the money for the Columbus Day Parade, um, and this is yes. a list of things that will yeah. get paid back. Then on page seven, uh, you can see our UDAG receivables. Um, I just want to mention that, um, let's see, DD Bing, both North Depot loans and the PA Every Architect have paid. Um, so they are all paid up through November. Uh, 142 Port Street still in default. What's 142? They are the folks Rolando's. that own Rolando's. Oh, 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 oh. They have that small balance left. Yeah. They have a very small balance left, and they have completely evaporated. Um, so I have been reaching out and will continue to do so, um, but probably they're probably not, time to start. The they're not there? They just own the building. They don't own the restaurant. What was the guarantees on the... Uh, the guarantees are, yeah, the, the principles in, like, the um so there's personal guarantees of the father who owns the restaurant? I don't think the restaurant I don't think the restaurant is the restaurant is a personal guarantee. Yeah, the restaurant is a tenant of the building. So the folks that own the building are the borrowers. The the money wasn't for the restaurant, it was for the, the building. No, no, I understand, room. but it's a personal guarantee. It's an asset. Right, but the, the leaseholder is not party to the loan. Just to do the work for okay. So yes, those people do have personal guarantees, but it's not related to the restaurant. But correct. Okay. Yeah. Um so in the unrestricted account, um the admin fee from the uh, the EAP program was deposited during October. Um no activity in the um I'm oh, sorry, in the triad account, the um the pass through amount for the SUNY Broom EAP um, went in, came out. Um, no activity in the veteran. Oh, no, there is. Um, yep, there was the MUDCAT yeah. grant. Yep. Um, so we got 6500 for the uh, MUDCAT grant through Security Mutual, which is great. Um, we get that every year, and it's really helpful for the veterans and issues. Um, grant account, no activity. Um, and then on the last page, you can see our delinquent accounts. Um, so again, uh, DD Bing, North Depot, and PA Every Architect are all set. So still delinquent, Ariel Hendricks, and 142 Port Street, making the delinquency percentage of all loans not designated as non-performing at 0.68. Any questions for Rachel? Thank you. Great. Do the owners of the building live in town? They have an address in town. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, that loan was before my time, so I don't know. I've never met them. I don't know them personally. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's Rolando's sons, right? It is a couple. But it could be his son. It's possible. I don't. Joel, do you have any? I. I mean, you have the paperwork somewhere. A in it. I right. believe that there. Yeah, there's there's personal. There may be personal issues at play. Um, right. So, but you know, that's really not our business. So <laughs> we're going to continue our efforts to try to collect. Rachel, we did ethically said Nick or Nick would find that they did it right. Have you sent them all the way? Oh yeah, no, they know. They get a letter from me every month, and the balance keeps going up. <laughs> There's no old business onto new business. There's a, several resolutions here. Um, okay, can we go back to the other thing? Mm -hmm. Is this thing with the uh, VMR? Okay, we haven't done anything with them in any years. Pretty much. Uh, could you be proactive on and stamp it out on personally? I mean, you got guys, if you've got one, these guys, we're going to get it. I think at some point, it goes through the state. I think, and I'm, I'm just saying this because I had a conversation with someone that worked there. Okay, and there's money around in that family. Mm -hmm. Huge. 
and I father-in-law. Think, I think if we don't do anything, we're not ever going to get anything. I think, but I think we need to try to attach something to him personally, and maybe he'll change his mind. Yeah, just rattle his cage. His yeah. father-in-law, his father-in-law is Frank Kane, who's a contractor, and uh, that's Vanessa's father, and he um he does very very well. And he's going through a tough time, and he's angry. So it would be a good time for somebody to send his son-in-law a letter, and he'll go to him and say, here, I can make this go away. Chuck, what are the next steps on that? Like, what do we have to do to authorize that to move forward or otherwise? I don't know. I mean, I had a conversation with someone that I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Personally. But no stuff. And basically said we're crazy not to go out. Let's do it. I'm for it. Is that but is that like something we do on the staff level or should we should we put a resolution together or we can spend the next month exploring that? I'm looking at Brian. Yeah. <laughs> We've done this before and uh, I have to look and see what the legal status is that they are no longer protected in bankruptcy. If that's the case. I probably would look at opening a resolution to also let him go outside counsel to prosecute. So, so, so right. We went after, we found somebody that had assets. We went after him and they made arrangements to pay, excel, you know, pay it off at an accelerated rate. No, I understand. That's better that, than usually you have to start an action of some kind. Yeah. So, yeah. so. And we have a personal guarantee on it because it's a business. So we, we probably do. We, we more likely do. That's the the one issue language. we have is that yeah. the federal government. Has priority over us, and they have two to three million dollars ahead of us. And then he's so got a lot of money ahead of us. Yes, exactly. Because the agency has money into the lead priority. I think what they do. And we, I think, I think we should. In my opinion is we should. I it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of a squeeze on them to see. But we have to hire an outside counsel to do that. Is that I would recommend. Yeah. Given yes. The, okay. Given the so, complexity. Given the complexity of yeah. it. Given the. Current state of my office, yes. We, we need to uh, yeah. Okay. okay, so what we'll do is we'll have the team. It's also because it's intertwined with a, a past bankruptcy, intertwined with the, the, the number of different loans and different entities that are coming after. This is something you want someone to specialize in. Sure. Okay. okay. We can take that to the staff level action yeah. item mm -hmm. for. This can get resolved within the next seven months, would it? No. Okay. No, it's potentially, but I'm unlikely. Okay. Okay. Years. Remember the, Years. Car, remember the car wash guy? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he Almost. went. He went bankruptcy. He didn't have any assets. One day, I'm at a gas station, and he there's a car there that's you know a very high end car. And I said, "Who's that?" And he says, "Also, he came right back to the city and said, go attach it.' So they did, and he made arrangements and paid it off because he didn't want to lose his. How's he explained to his wife he lost his car? <laughs> <laughs> Over low and didn't pay. <laughs> okay. Any anything else on the treasurer? On the north side. Thing? Great. Next up. So resolution 2218 is a resolution of the Binghamton Local Development Corporation authorizing the president to enter into agreement with the city of Binghamton to provide economic development services. Do you want to that pass it over to Steve or um so this is an agreement. Actually, um I guess we should ask Steve, did this pass the city council last night? I don't know yet. Uh it was on the oh you were there? Oh. Uh, it was on the agenda for approval. Uh, it probably did. I don't know of any reason it wouldn't. There was a a, a, a large amount of items on one one R L once, so I I, don't, I, don't, okay. I haven't heard anything about them holding it up. Um, the agreement is ever so slightly tweaked, uh, different to improve it to meet um, some of our issues we were having with uh, making sure we're tracking salaries correctly, um, and I also changed the periods of reimbursement um, as well as the period of time of the agreement itself. So. Um, it matches with the other CDBD agreements. Uh, the the BLDC year is what September to August or October to September? Uh, September to August. Okay, so now this contract will, will be the exact same period of time, so that should help you guys on your side as well. So, but other than that, it's essentially the same and it's for the same amount as the previous year 145,000. So, just our annual annual agreement with the city of Binghamton. Do I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Susan. Ron, for the second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Resolution 2220. 
the BLDC authorizing the president to enter into an agreement with AJ's Property Care for snow removal services for six BLDC owned properties. So we own a number of properties. They're listed there, mostly pump stations associated with the old Anatech facility, um, as well as the Charles Street Business Park. Mm -hmm. And this is just, we put out a request for quotes from a couple of local companies. We got two responses, went with the low bidder. Um, we've worked with this. We've also worked with this property care agency before and had positive experiences. So officially entering into a, uh, it's by snow event. So the contract is a certain amount per snow event. So hopefully we won't get tons of snow events, right. but if the last few years right. have any indication, um, We'll be, we'll be needing them. I remember we're down in Buffalo this weekend. Right? So, or Watertown. You know, I need any place to live. Just out of curiosity, yeah. how far apart were these bids? Um, one was almost half of the other one. Yeah. But they're responsible, but are, you do have a past relationship with yes. them. Yes. Yeah. 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 We were very happy with the quality of their work. <laughs> the lawn mowing. They're all too busy now. That's that's the issue is there's so much competition that they can command. And I certainly respect their ability to command the market rate. Um, one of those. Yeah, but you only got two to respond. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. too busy to do this. 100%. Yep. It's, uh, the demand is very high and the supply is low. So it's a good time to open up property care agency, it seems like. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> Just need to get the money. So uh, is there a motion for that? Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Frank, for the second. Any further discussion? Uh, just one last quick question. Uh, how does this go out for bid, same way? Uh, odds so it's a. It's not a full RFP because it's below, uh, and I don't remember the dollar amount off the top of my head, but it's we just have to go out for quotes um, <laughs> and get them back and make the decision internally. Now we will. And we can get this in my report. We will probably be adjusting our procurement policies in the next few months based on best practices. Um, we currently use the city of Binghamton's policies that don't really serve this body very well. <clears throat> so we'll probably see that change in the future. Um, the reason you haven't, you did not see this for the lawn mowing is that we had a previous contract in place starting in 2022, and that vendor decided not to proceed. Well, he just we had the contract, and he decided he did not want to. Priscilla? Yes. Hmm. So we have to essentially procure emergency services so that we could maintain our properties and not have code violations. So trying to be more proactive and actually having these contracts in place and taking them through the, the full procurement process so we're not in a position where we're making essentially emergency decisions and we are at the mercy of whatever that cost is that comes in. So the code people will, will go after the people for the code. <laughs> they, they just come to my office and say, yeah. Your property are looking a little rough today. Give me a, a courtesy heads up. Calls <laughs> from neighbors. Yes, yeah. yes. Anything further? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The next resolution 2222. Uh, approving changes to the terms of a special yeah. projects line loan to Qua Industries LLC in an amount not to exceed $150,000 from the Urban Development Action Grant UDAG account and a revolving loan in an amount not to exceed $100,000 for equipment and working capital. Uh, yeah, so this is basically, this is a package of loans that we already approved and what we're approving now is a slight change to the terms. Um, the gentleman from CLAW had a windfall of a very enormous grant and um, they're not gonna be needing funding kind of like in the same way. So we worked on kind of like a line of credit um, way of doing things and it's the same amount. Um, so we're gonna basically uh, allow them to borrow $150,000 from UDAG and up to $100,000 from the restricted as needed. Um, so the way it's going to work is they will have six months to make their first drawdown from the UDAG funds. They will spend the UDAG funds first. Um, if they borrow all of that UDAG money, then they can move into the restricted money. Um, and I believe the repayment terms are the same. Um, so this is just approving those changes. And um, 
Rachel, Joel, Susan, and I had many conversations about this loan. Um, one thing, we're using this a little bit as a test case. We'd like to explore doing more of these lines of credit type loans. Um, we know we get a lot of requests for, you know, I just need $2,000 right now, but that same person might need $5,000 in six months and $7,500 six months after that, which is a good problem to have. It means they're growing. It means they have additional expenses. So we're looking at, you know, instead of approving individual small loans, does it make sense to do larger loans as a line of credit? Now, how that works with reporting and how we, we work through that with HUD, um, this is going to help us work through that process so that we can um, roll out not a new loan program, but a new way of marketing our loan programs so that they're more accessible to um, to folks and, and they can get they don't have to take on $25,000 of debt all at once, right. but if they end up needing that because their business is going so great, it's all kind of built into the same package. Um, we also talked a lot with Claw. Their initial ask of us was they were like, hey, we got this money from the EPA. We don't need your loan anymore. Like we're, we're, we're good. We had a very long conversation with them about the value of building this credit, um, especially as a startup. Uh, it's very difficult to get private financing. And so having this track record of you have a loan, you're paying it back, you're building that that business credit. Um, and they, Susan was instrumental in, in helping them understand that and the value of that. So it's still a great loan. They're still growing, adding jobs, doing construction on their facility. Um, and this will just enable them to take it even that much farther with the 500,000 500, that they got from the EPA. Yeah. Basically, they don't have any debt. Correct. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, they bought their building outright. Well, they're 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 young and they're debt averse. No, that's wonderful. Which is great, but you also have to build working capital, and you yeah. need to build you need to build a relationship to show that Tremendous. you can pay back credit. So that's the conversation that we had to make them understand that. Um, and they also are getting um, monies from Street Act, hundred thousand dollars. So um, it's the Southern Tier Regional Economic Development Council. Um, so that's why it's got a. Another another acronym as we live in the banking world um, and the government world. So yeah, so uh, you know, exciting times for them. They're going places uh, for sure. Um, one of the stumbling blocks for them from getting conventional bank financing is that they don't really have said contracts, if you will. Um, they have the contract with the city of Binghamton, and so it's just a matter of having that that piece of it to to move forward. So. This is this is wonderful that we're able to put this together for them. Um, it's the kind of business that the BLDC um, is here for, and I'm super excited to be part of it. That's for sure. <laughs> so, do I have a motion for this resolution? So, thank you. Second. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. These guys are fun to watch. So, um, the last resolution is a resolution of the BLDC approving a revolving loan for a pizza place. This is very exciting. Hand in hand enterprise. Hey. Hey. <laughs> amount not to exceed $250,000 for the purchase of the business Nurchie's Pizza at 166 Water Street. Yeah. He has been there for years. years. And, uh, yep. So, so John Hanrahan, who's a current employee at uh, Nurchie's Pizza in a management position, has been wanting to take over this particular operation for a number of years. COVID slowed things down a little bit. I believe he told us it was, you know, a blessing in disguise, gave him a little more time to get um, things together. He came to us with a really well-built packet of information with everything we needed um, to move this loan forward pretty quickly. But so it's, it's essentially just buying a piece of the franchise from the existing the pizza systems Inc. Yep, yes. own, yep. and they own two or three nurgies. He's just buying this one location. Um, his goal is to retain all of the the people who work there if they would like to come over under his. It's essentially just moving from one LLC to a, or another uh, incorporation, um, and just keep keep doing what they're doing. He's not planning any major changes. It's just kind of the next step in his career to go from management of the facility to ownership and build that equity and keep the nurseries in downtown alive as the current owner is looking to move, move a little bit out of um, the, the spotlight on these things, but he'll still be working closely with, uh, with the current owner on 
the transition and making sure he has all the information he needs to have a successful, successful business. How much is he paying for this franchise? So the franchise fee and the purchase of the business are separate. So he's paying two seventy five dollars for the purchase of the business, and he's paying a $25,000 franchise fee to Nurchies. So we're loaning him 80% or 85%? Um, so he has, yes. Yeah, so this, we are a little bit in like a high percentage of this loan. He is also getting funding from Street Act. Um, so there will be $65,000 in funding from Street Act as part of this package. Um, and his own equity is about $35,000, 35000 $40,000. So that would make what he needs a lot less than than two fifty, dollars isn't it? I mean... I mean, the whole thing is three hundred thousand, right? So the 275 total plus twenty five. Package is three fifty. Yeah. Um, and we are at about eighty percent of like the funded part of the package. Um, and then twenty percent would be street act. Um, That's one hundred and thirty, right? You said sixty from. So sixty five street. I should have brought the uh, the narrative here. Um, but I believe that the way it works out is that yeah, sixty five thousand dollars in funding from Street Deck, two hundred fifty thousand dollars from us, and about thirty five in his equity. Yeah. Um. So he's ten percent equity. Um. There, Street Deck is twenty percent. We're eighty percent. Okay. Just give him some working capital. It is going to give him some working capital. I mean, it'll give him about a month's worth of yeah, like inventory and working capital. And who owns the building and what kind of lease does he get? Um, so the owner of the building, uh, for gosh, I was pushing no, no, is it no, no, no. he's I think it's I think a tree is a big one. Oh, okay, no, David has not owned that piece for a while. I thought John Marshall actually bought that piece, but I'm not sure the owner under, of the building is it's under an LLC, I yeah. yeah. Does he have a good lease? Yes, yes. the lease in place yeah. is great. Um, and obviously, Nurtis has leased for a long time. Um, they've been updating the same lease, it looks like, since like the 90s. Um, so he has a very good lease. And John Marshall is the current owner, mm -hmm. and he's going to stay on mm -hmm. as bookkeep and do, to do the bookkeeping, which is you know, obviously very important. So even though, and he has two other locations that he intends to sell. Um, so they will, they will be he's not just abandoning it just to just walk away you know what i mean he's still going to be able to help what out. other assets does uh, this young mr hanrahan have? so the assets um the collateral that we will be using for this loan are the um the business like the fixtures, the fixtures. The restaurant so there's fixtures. no personal guarantee yeah there will be a personal guarantee um at, of, on what of, does he have an asset his house house his house um so, I mean, that hopefully that doesn't come into play. The collateral that we will be listing on the we'll loan. We'll be making pieces. We'll be doing a UCC filing for uh, the fixtures of the business. and Which have all been valued. He, he gave us a whole breakdown of the value of everything. So uh, the way part of this came about is that he was working with KeyBank, I believe, yep. on an SBA guaranteed loan. They got very significantly far through the process when the SBA told him that because Nurses is not a standard franchise, that they can't. Um, so that's when he turned to us and said, hey, private financing isn't going to work. Um, and it was important to us to maintain the business in downtown, create a new generation of business ownership. And especially, I mean, that's exactly the story that you want to hear, right? Someone who worked in the business for 20 years, and earned enough money and expertise and um, loyalty from the the operation to be able to take over it and take it into the next generation. He, so. he, he runs it now and he's been running it for, you know, 15 of the last 20 years. So, what kind of revenues for that? Uh, I mean, the revenues are good. The uh, cash flow, I can send. Um, it's, a, it's a good business. It's yeah, business. I can send the package around. I to think everybody it's a really good. Interested. I mean, we don't we don't make we need to make more loans, yeah. and this is a this is a good low risk loan in my opinion. I think eight hundred thousand. So. Mm. So. Revenues. Yeah, whatever it is, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it was more than enough to cover yeah. the debt service. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, we, we're cash flowing. It's not, you know, it's, it's not a loss leader. <laughs> if you will. I would yeah. say it's a it's definitely we're on the high end of where we would, would be generally like to be on these loans. But it was because the strength of all of the background information, which, yeah, we can we can set over the loan narrative. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of paper today. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's take what we learned from 2020, though. He got only has one year, one month worth of working capital, and then the pandemic is at it. It shuts down for three months. What's going to happen? Does he have the liquid cash to support it himself? Well, people will still order pizzas. Right. But but one would assume, yeah. But to Chuck's point, I mean that is that is a concern certainly. Can you look at the 2020 yeah. 2021 returns yeah. and see? Yeah, you got it all. PA gave how it was he? How far off was it? Um, I mean there was a dip. Yeah, in I mean 2021 22, but not significant. Not significant at all because they do such not a big takeout business and delivery business right. anyway. But I'm not so much concerned about the 2021. I'm concerned that if something does go wrong, does he have liquid cash? Some type of liquid cash that he's putting up to help support this right now. Right. Since and if you put him in a bad situation where he has no cash and that's or enough to put other assets to draw on, he has a couple of bad months. He does have he does have personal liquidity. He's got sixty five thousand, so he's giving you know thirty five to the business. So he does have a little cushion there personally, um, and he has room to borrow on the house as well. So I'm just. Mm -hmm. There is there is a method where he could if he had to. But there is a personal guarantee. Yes. Yes. I just all I the years it. I've These been on this questions. restaurants have burned us. Oh, absolutely. And, I, and and it's the same scenario. Yes, it looks great. Is that? And I'm not saying it is. No, no, of course. And I understand the need to start loaning, but you know when you take two hundred fifty thousand and it's a restaurant. In the past, we've gotten burned. Ninety percent of in, restaurants fail. In the, the new in, restaurant, well, that's what yeah, you're asking. In, in the, the past, past, what burned it was a new startup. Right, that's or what this was one doesn't have, existing. This one doesn't have a debt service of almost three hundred thousand dollars on it, or three hundred fifty. Monthly, um, the monthly is not. It's well, he owes three fifty, correct? The franchise fee and the franchise fee is is not, is up front. Franchise fee will be up front. That's not a loan. Yeah. So he's paying that up front. Yes. Yeah. So and he still owes two two seventy five. But the terms are very reasonable in terms of Street Act and us. So in terms of the um, amortization, it's I, I understand what you're saying, Ron. But well, if three months ago and all of a sudden interest rates go up, and he's going to be on adjustable. Well, Street Act is five percent. So. Yeah, it's fixed. And our interest rate is fixed. So, okay. All the questions. Yeah. So that means if anyone's ordering pizzas, go down to the nursery. Yeah, down it's there. nursery from Please now order down, down to the <laughs> Was it five, 15, five year, uh, 15 years, five year? I set it up as a 10 year tenure. Um, but if 10 I mean, and 10? Yeah. yeah. And he didn't seem to have a problem with that. Um, I wouldn't. Certainly. <laughs> you know, <I'm> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, because we like to be nice to our borrowers and we're here to help. No, them. no, I, I'd love to see him succeed. <laughs> I mean, Nurchies is, I mean, people come downtown to go to Nurchies. Yeah. yeah, and they also have like a significant um, segment of their business that's catering. So um, they're doing very well. Yeah, huh. I, and I hope they continue. For 10 years. <laughs> to the next generation. Sorry, exactly. I little, I, I've seen the bad. No, we get it. 100%. And the VMRs, it was like a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they were making so much money hand over fist. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it hurts our ability to do more. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I never want this board to feel like you're just rubber stamping things we bring to you. So that's not my thing there that I don't feel like I have to rubber stamp. <laughs> that's part of that, isn't Perfect. it? Perfect. Yeah, yeah, we we want you to ask questions. We want you to be, you know, challenging these things, and it's incumbent upon us to have answers to your questions and, and make you guys comfortable with the loans that we're making. Well, good job. I'm sure that was a tough one to go through. It was. It was all Rachel. Stuff. Rachel's fantastic at that. Well, shockingly, as as Sarah started to say, that the information and the numbers that we got were well above what I expected when when I heard it. So. I share your concerns. So, but. I think we still need a motion to. Oh, well, you just have oh, yeah. both things from the revolving loan perspective. Mm -hmm. Still about like, about a million sitting in the bank on the revolving yeah. loan. Yeah. This is a. Hundred percent. From my perspective, just looking at it from the HUD angle, this mm -hmm. is a great mm -hmm. way of using revolving loans funds because it's an existing business. We're going to have to return into the, the jobs. Mm -hmm. 
which is going to be an automatic yeah. ability for me to do the draw and then close that out almost what immediately. Uh, we're going to meet those performance measures. Uh, we're going to pull down that money and reduce the RL account. Uh, it's automatically pre-qualified that all those jobs are paying qualifies LMI because of the poverty area. Um, and these are the types of loans that I recommend from the administrative aspect of it to pursue more of because this is a great way of using the development. <laughs> we get it. We need a motion yet. No motion. We need a All the Ryan. complaints. All the <laughs> no, complaints. no, we have a second. Like Thank, a second. Thank you, Frank. Any further discussion? They need a paint job. All in favor? Well, tell them. All right, I was in there recently. Tell them. All right. Um, so the, the mayor is not here. So his regards. He apologizes for, for missing you all this morning. I have 40 minutes of remarks and I'm going to make it just uh, very good. <laughs> Sarah, go ahead, please. Um, yeah, so with, with my time today, I'd really like to um, just thank the board for all of your support and knowledge, um, insights that you've brought over the last nine months. It's crazy that I've been here for nine months. Um, feels like two days, feels like seven years. Uh, it depends on the day. Um, but really, I think we've we've gotten a lot done. I've learned a lot from all of you. Um, I hope that you have felt like the staff has given you guys enough information that you're feel like you're making good decisions and making a positive impact on the city of Binghamton. Um, we have our annual report is almost finalized. We'll be sending that out to all of you. Highlights of what we've done this year, but I mean, our first post-COVID loan, um, I think our first non-COVID loan since early 2020 was this year. Um, you guys were instrumental in supporting the DRI application, which we still have not heard the announcement on. Um, trying not to just continually refresh the governor's newsroom every six seconds, but um, mm. really just just want to thank you for for all of your support. Really looking forward to 2023. Like I said, we have some, I think, exciting changes on the horizon that will enable us to be more nimble, um, access some of the tools that only LDCs can access. For the past number of years, I think we've been acting more like almost like a city department that has a board. And now we're looking towards what does it actually mean to be a local development corporation? What tools does that afford us that <coughs> have under the Office of Economic Development and how can we best utilize those to be nimble, be able to respond to challenges in the economic situation of the city of Binghamton. And um, yeah, we'll just, we'll keep moving ahead. Uh, I've We've got an open door policy. If you guys have any questions, any ideas, anything you want to work on more, work on less, any of these performance metrics that you feel like we're not hitting or that aren't integral to our mission, we'd love to, to hear it and have those conversations. And I believe the plan right now is to not have a December meeting and you know, like we'll focus on the, the holidays and closing out the year and all the, the good things that come with December. And we'll regroup in January and hopefully have some good DRI news to share, some good uh, consolidated funding application news to share, and uh, paint you guys a picture of what 2023 is going to look like. Any questions for me? Just want to know how California was. Great. Mm, awesome. It's warm. It's snowing here. So All right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and then um, we are hosting, the City of Minnesota is hosting a tree lighting on November 26th in conjunction with Small Business Saturday. So we're currently working on collecting a bunch of information from businesses across the city on what they're doing for that day, which discounts, who's open, what your hours are, because a lot of people do extended hours, special hours, uh, maybe yeah, don't open at all. Menorah. Ron is looking into getting the menorah. It's November, that's not it, November, that's, December that's 18th. Yes, <laughs> December 18th. I, I, I made I, I sure made, the light I, festival had a menorah. I made sure. <laughs> Yeah, I've been trying to work with the SAGNO and with Yanadi, and when they went up on my roof to start the process of the new roof, uh, there was no menorah up there anymore, and Ron Quellen doesn't know where it is. So, well, what do we need? Uh, some two. Frank, you've got friends in the craft. We need, we need a menorah. <laughs> do you want me to take a picture of it? I know I'm very right. familiar with the menorah, <laughs> Um, certainly, well, you want to call me later. Uh, well, I thought we can talk about it after after noon. Well, no, I have to go to Serafini's okay. mother's too. Oh, I bring it. What time is the tree lighting? The tree lighting itself is at five thirty. <laughs> there will be things happening throughout the day. 
Tri-Cities Opera is coming, the chamber is organizing a beer garden concert type thing nearby. Um, so all day- have hot chocolate and stuff like that, you're gonna do something like that. Beer Tree's doing coffee. Um, and then I reached out oh, to kids. all of the downtown businesses and asked if anybody wanted to do anything. I haven't gotten responses yet from anyone who wanted to like have a table out. Um, Talk to uh, David Whalen, maybe he'll. Yeah, you know, they you know, just get some. I mean, kids don't want the coffee. And I think, yeah. are you getting it from uh, Strange Brew? The coffee? Strange Brew's not, oh, no, it's Beer Tree because Strange Brew's not open that day. They don't open on small business Saturday. Well, anyhow, uh, yeah, somebody, kids would like hat chocolate. Yeah, yeah. And then we can get it Maybe on Maybe Dave the... would like to do that. Yeah. I'll talk to you uh, probably later. Or... Yeah. yeah, we can figure out. Well, that being said, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. All the you things too. between now and New Year. You're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. I know. I know. Okay, good. I mean, yes. you're just yeah. Yeah. You. Fifth generation. Thanks his grandfather. Oh, 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 o